International with Milton Nash. Good evening. Prime Minister Mulroney told Ronald Reagan that his government plans to restore good relations with the United States starting right now. The two men have agreed to meet at least once a year as long as they're both in power. David Halton reports. From the start, it was no secret why Brian Mulroney was rolling up to the White House only eight days after being sworn in. The Prime Minister was here to tell President Reagan what he was telling Canadian voters for the past few months, that he wants to restore not just good relations, but what he calls super relations between Canada and the U.S. In a recent election campaign, uh, my party and I campaigned on a program uh, in part of refurbishing the relationship, historic relationship, of trust and friendship uh, between the United States of America and Canada. There was no hard bargaining today on such problems as acid rain, but there was a lot of show to symbolize the new relationship, such as a ceremony to honor Canadian astronaut Mark Garneau. Reagan was clearly delighted to be dealing with a Canadian Prime Minister who will be much less critical of American foreign policy and who will abandon some of the nationalist economic approaches of the Trudeau government. The president had another reason to be happy with today's meeting. It was part of his big effort this week to enhance his election image as a statesman and man of peace. At a departing ceremony, Reagan told Mulroney that he wanted Canada's cooperation in the search for better east-west relations. I told him that in our efforts to build a lasting structure of peace and security, we shall continue to value the experience, the counsel, and the participation of our Canadian allies. For our part, we intend to continue to seek opportunities for constructive dialogue with the Soviet Union and with Eastern European countries. It was already clear before Mulroney's departure this afternoon that he expects a payoff from the Americans in return for being a more supportive ally. After arriving at Andrews Air Force Base for the flight home, he told reporters that he wants more U.S. investment and firmer guarantees of access to American markets. Mulroney also repeatedly stressed that warmer relations with the U.S. won't mean less independence for Canada. And as I indicated today, a healthy, strong relationship with the United States of America in no way presupposes uh, any degree of subservience on our part. Nonetheless, Reagan administration officials are already talking tonight of a restored special relationship with Canada and privately, they're predicting that Brian Mulroney will be one of the most pro-American prime ministers that Canada has ever had. David Halton, CBC News, Washington. Joe Clark, the former prime minister, says he doesn't mind taking second place behind Brian Mulroney. Clark is now the Minister for External Affairs, and he was in New York today to give his first speech to the United Nations General Assembly. Terry Molesky was there. While Mulroney was in Washington, Joe Clark was at the United Nations meeting the Soviet Foreign Minister, Andrei Gromyko. Clark briefly mentioned the Korean Airlines case and sought and received no reply. But the real question here was not what Gromyko would say to Clark, but what he'd say to Ronald Reagan's offer to talk. Mr. Gromyko, do you welcome Mr. Reagan's speech, the tone of that speech? Are you prepared to well, Now, meetings is between Canada and the Soviet Union. That's good for you. That's the way to be. Yeah, they know no limits. The president heard no. Oh. Clark banked up Gromyko in fending off reporters and later did the same himself. Was Gromyko warm to the Reagan offer? Clark refused to answer. I can, but I won't. <laughs> what he did say, though, was that he accepts he's number two in foreign policy. Brian Mulroney is in charge. But I will be urging him actively to, um, uh, to play a leading international role. Uh, I will not feel that he is competing with me. Uh, and I will not be competing with him. So Clark was quite forthcoming about his own position, but rather less so about the meeting with Gromyko. However, one Canadian official who did unbend a little noted that Gromyko was definitely less negative than usual about Ronald Reagan. Now, that's not much to go on, but it is the first public indication that the Russians are responding to Reagan's softer line. Clark himself also took a soft line in a speech to the United Nations General Assembly. It contained not a single noticeable change in Canadian policy. Even the Trudeau Peace Initiative lives on. Canada, for its part, is determined to continue to play a leading role in the search for peace and disarmament. We believe that the nuclear buildup threatens the life of every Canadian. 
and that it threatens the existence of human society. Clark stayed well clear of any kind of controversy today, both in his speech and in briefing reporters. He answered many questions by saying he needs more time to study the issues, which he promised to do in what he called a no-holds-barred public review of foreign policy. For now, though, he is playing it safe, letting Mulroney take the lead and giving a speech here which could easily have been given by any recent Canadian foreign minister, conservative or liberal. Terry Malevsky, CBC News, New York. Yesterday at the UN, Ronald Reagan called for better relations between the United States and the Soviet Union. On Friday, he'll get an answer. That's when he and Soviet Foreign Minister Andrei Gromyko meet in Washington. And even if Gromyko hinted privately that he's prepared to listen, publicly, the Soviets are keeping up their attacks. The first attack came from Soviet President Konstantin Chernyenko. He spoke to Soviet writers at the Kremlin. He didn't refer to Reagan by name, but he accused the U.S. of preparing for war. Later, another attack came from TASS, the official Soviet news agency. TASS called the Reagan speech electioneering. Time for us to become a stronger and a more reliable ally of the United States and all our NATO partners and our friends in the Western Alliance. If this means giving our friends the benefit of the doubt from time to time, so be it. I'm going to do it. That forceful message was delivered by leader of the opposition, Brian Mulroney, nearly a year ago. So it is not surprising that Prime Minister Brian Mulroney headed to Washington only eight days into office. Last time Mulroney went to the White House, his Irish charm seems to have paid off. What the continent needs is another Irish. <laughs> was well liked by the Reagan administration. A high-ranking State Department official made sure Canadian newsmen were told how popular the Prime Minister is in Washington. Here are some of the reasons the Reagan administration is so pleased with Brian Mulroney. Trade. The Tories have already made good on one campaign promise. The Foreign Investment Review Agency, FIRA, has been changed to Investment Canada. Its mandate is to attract foreign investment reviewing only the major foreign takeovers. FIRA has always been a thorn in the American side. Defense. The Conservatives say they will increase defense spending by 6%. They want to increase the size of our armed forces. Canada's performance in NATO has long been a source of contention, and Prime Minister Marooni wants Canada to honor its NATO commitments. No matter how well Brian Marooni and Ronald Reagan get along, there are still many potential sore spots. Our exports are still vulnerable. Reagan may have prevented the imposition of steel quotas, but there are some tough decisions ahead in the critical area of trade. Although it was discussed today, there is still no agreement on acid rain. Each year, 27 million tons of sulfur dioxide is spewed into the air from U.S. plants, and the Americans are dragging their feet on cleaning it up. And Canadians are still uncomfortable with Ronald Reagan's international record. There will be significant pressure on Brian Mulroney not to repeat anything like the cruise testing. 85% of Canadians favor a verifiable nuclear freeze. Canada and the United States have not always seen eye to eye on trouble spots like Central America either. It is not clear whether Brian Mulroney's willingness to give the U.S. the benefit of the doubt extends to Ronald Reagan's policies in that troubled region. And it will make the same point he made to Prime Minister Mulroney of Canada that despite the apparent hard line from Moscow, he wants to improve the atmosphere for talks. Mr. Reagan dismissed the idea that the Soviets have already rejected his initiative. As far as I know. Well, how do you explain Chernyenko's speech? I don't. <laughs> but in the wake of Moscow's harsh statements, White House spokesmen went out of their way to lower expectations for immediate results from the upcoming meeting with Foreign Minister Gromyko. But Henry Kissinger, arriving to help prepare Mr. Reagan for his lengthy meeting with Gromyko, said he expects some positive results. The president was quick to make it known that he's not taking the very negative response the Soviet news agency TASS had to his UN speech as the final Soviet position. I never get good reviews from TASS. <laughs> the president is hoping for some different reviews when Secretary Schultz meets with Gromyko today and during his own meeting with Gromyko on Friday. To prepare for that meeting, Ronald Reagan revealed that he met secretly in New York this week with Richard Nixon, and he called into the White House the other chief architect of detente, Henry Kissinger. 
Candidate Ronald Reagan criticized Dayton as a one-way deal, but as the election draws near, President Reagan continues to soften his position, and Kissinger now believes the Soviets are ready to deal. Aid, arms control, and the strengthening of cross-border ties. They also discussed acid rain, the National Energy Program, and foreign investment review regulations. Senior U.S. aide said the visit was a positive one. The two leaders agreeing to meet once a year, consult each other in the event of any disputes. Each other's interests in mind to keep one another informed and to hear one another out on the issues which may arise between us. Mulroney held a news conference on the airport tarmac after the